Hey folks, I just picked up this weird little MIDI controller last week and I wanted to share my thoughts about it as someone who uses MIDI controllers all the time. This is the Orba One by Artifon. It is a handheld synth, looper, and Bluetooth MIDI controller all in one roughly the size of an apple. I picked it up used from a neighbor since I needed a Bluetooth MIDI controller to test out the functionality with my apps and it was also a, a impulse buy, okay? Are you happy now? Apparently the Orba got its start from Kickstarter, which I always think is pretty neato. Everything about this device is unique, but another unique thing about this device is that it comes with four instruments. Drums, bass, chords, and lead. Let me show you around the place. On the side you'll see we have our volume control, power button, USB-C port, and a headphone jack. On top there are eight touch sensitive pads. Each pad corresponds to different notes or chords in the key of C. You play them by tapping or sliding across the pads. There is haptic feedback whenever you play a note so it shakes in your hand a little bit. And it also has a nice weight which makes it feel like a sturdy device. That might not seem important but I know even like the old Beats headphones used to have weights added in there just so it felt like a more substantial piece of electronics. The top is just one piece of molded plastic and I guess it's thin enough that it just doesn't have any trouble sensing the touch through it. If you tilt the device it has the same effect as turning the mod wheel on a MIDI controller and moving your finger along the Y axis of the note sends a MIDI CC value to controller number 74 typically mapped for a filters cutoff. The default sounds are pretty good but I'm using it primarily as a MIDI controller. I've read that the Orba 2 comes with the ability to sample sounds from the device and I can see that as being a really nice upgrade. There is a looper function that extends the usefulness a bit but the loop is pretty short and it has a loud metronome that plays while you're doing it so I don't think it's really suited for live looping. Instead I see it more as a way to build a backing track to solo over. So here are the pros and cons I see with this device. First off, I'm just glad that this device even exists. It doesn't follow the normal conventions of MIDI controllers. We need more music tech that takes risks and innovates, and this definitely does that. First off, it's fun to play. Straight out of the box, I turned the device on and just started making music. It really works for any skill level. I was having fun making loops with it, and then my six-year-old daughter stole it from me, and she had fun playing with it too. Boundaries. And since it's so compact and portable, you could really just pick it up and start playing music anytime you feel inspired. Another pro is that it looks cool. I could see myself making videos with this device just for the aesthetic. I know that seems kind of weird, but it's one of the things that makes this device so appealing in the first place. It looks cool. The last pro is that it uses Bluetooth MIDI. If you create music on mobile, then the dongle situation for iOS is confusing at best and infuriating at worst. So having it connect wirelessly is a nice addition, and it's one of the main reasons I picked up the device in the first place. If you're using this with a mobile app that supports MIDI over Bluetooth, connecting the device is very simple. Now for the cons. You're limited to one scaled octave at a time. You can shift the octave, but at any given time you only have eight notes to play with. I think creative constraints are good, but at times with this I felt a little too constrained. Also, the stock sounds are good, but they could be better, especially for the drums. Fortunately, there is a free Orbit companion app that you can import new sounds with over Bluetooth. Being able to do this wirelessly makes it not too much of a hassle, but it'd be nice to have more presets available on the device. I really don't know if most users would be playing this as a standalone device or using it as a MIDI controller, but if you are just using the built-in sounds, then you might be better off getting the Orba 2 so you can do all the sampling stuff on the device. But then again, if you're just looking for a good portable sampler, then maybe you might just download an app like Koala Sampler. 
And the last con for the Orbit is just that it is competing at a very competitive price point if your primary use is as a MIDI controller. The Orbit starts at around $100 and the Orbit 2 is $150. At that price you could get a decent entry level Arturia MIDI keyboard or a Novation launch pad, although controllers with Bluetooth do tend to cost a bit more. So if you're looking for picking up your first MIDI controller, I'd still recommend getting a keyboard or MPC style device. But if you're looking for something a little bit quirky and different that is easy to use and makes sounds straight out of the box, then the Orba might be right for you. I think I kind of love this thing, and maybe we'll revisit the Orba in a future video to see how much I actually end up using it. The Orba does have some mixed reviews online, so Google it and read through those before purchasing. I only tested the companion app and Bluetooth connection on iOS, so it might work differently on Android and Mac OS. Bluetooth MIDI isn't supported on Windows, so you'll need to use the USB-C cable for that. I'll link to the Orba manual in the description and pinned comment where you can learn more. Sound off in the comments, let me know what you think about the Orba, or if you have any MIDI controllers that you really love. I've been using the R2 Arturia Keylab 49 for the past year, and I'm going to do a review on that soon. If you'd like to make your own MIDI controller, I'll put a tutorial on the screen of how I made a cigar box arcade style MIDI controller. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.